All right, so tonight's project's going to be one that I've wanted to do for quite a while, and I've done a lot of research on this, on and off. It could be useful for just transferring files from one server to another, or even more for booting a Raspberry Pi or something off the network. With those videos soon to come, as I develop more of the techniques and skills required for them, I wanted to create this. Now, I do have to say, building this in a container is not the most secure way to do it. We disable a lot of container security in order to get this to happen. But with that, it is an easy way to store it, keep everything separate, keep it confined, and make it easier to manage. So let's start by going out and grabbing a container image. And then let's configure the container as needed and then install our software, and then I'll show you how to load the share into your Proxmox server. So the first thing we need to do is go to our local drive that was created when we installed Proxmox. This is the default location for container templates. As you can see, I have the container template here that I desire using. But if we didn't, we'd click here on templates, and we'd scroll through until we found it, click on it, and then click download. If I click download, it's going to tell me the file's already there. So now that we have our file, let's go create container, give it a name, unselect unprivileged container, fill out the password, select our template, Disk size of 8 gigs is going to be fine for me, but in most scenarios, it's probably not for you. So make sure to adjust this as needed and select the storage drive you desire. The default for an LVM install of Proxmox is going to be local LVM, but if you've added other drives, this may differ depending on your setup. CPU 1 core is going to be fine for me. Increase this if you have problems later on. Memory of 512 may work okay for you. It's hard to say. My container that I've been using hasn't used over 512, so I feel it'll be okay. But one gig would be a great number to give this container. Now, we're gonna set up a static IP address so we can always communicate with the container at the same location. Then we're gonna add a CIA ID notation of dash 24. DNS should be, have been provided when we set up our Proxmox servers, so we're going to leave it alone, and we're going to move through and finish. Okay, select server, go to shell, and I already have this configuration here, but you're going to need to nano to etc pve lxc your container number dot config. And we're going to want to add a line of LXC app armor dot profile colon unconfined. And save quit. Close our shell. Select our container now. Start and open the console. Log in. The password is the password you configure during the setup of the container. I'm going to run an apt update and and apt. If you don't know what that command does, it updates the repository list for available updates and then upgrades all upgradable software to the latest version. So in our case, we have 34 different packages that need updating. All right, so now let's install the package we need to create the NFS server. apt install nfs-kernel server, and we're going to answer why.
Alrighty. So now let's create a directory to store our files in. mk dir dash p space slash s r v n f s for backups. Enter. Now we're going to run a ch mod 777 to the same folder. This is going to remove all user restrictions from this folder. So now let's nano to etc to etc exports and here we're going to add the line slash SRV and S4 backups space the IP range that this is available to with the CID notation of 24. So this is available to all addresses from 192.168.1 subnet. Then we're going to set some tags for different privileges. The first one is RW for read write. The next one is going to be sync, which is the option that enables NFS server to reply to requests only after changes have been committed to stable storage. Then we're going to add no subtree. Now this further disables the subtree checking storage. There are security implementations with this, but it basically improves reliability and performance of NFS. So now we can hit X or Control X, Y to save, and we can run the command exports FS dash AR. And this will apply modifications that we made to the exports file. All right, so our NFS server should now be set up. Let's head over to Proxmox and test this out. I'm going to run the IP address command so we can see the IP address, even though we configured it. And I remember it. It's always a check I like to do. Now let's go to Data Center, Storage, Add, NFS. We'll give it a name. This is whatever you desire. Now enter the address of your server. This time we're not going to be adding our CID notation. And we're going to come down here, select our export, and hit add. I had that error message happen once before. Let's see if we can fix it. All the files look configured correctly. Let's try a reboot. There we go. I had a name that I had already had a file in there. As you can see, we're now able to use our NFS server to store files on our Proxmox server. Now there's many other ideas where you want to do things. For example, I set one of these up on my other server as I was transferring files from the R710 getting ready to reload it and make some modifications to that server. It was an easy, convenient way to store files and move them back and forth. I hope you enjoyed tonight's presentation and find some uses for an NFS server. I know I have some coming to you in the near future. As always, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and have a good night.